kids and welcome to another children's church. So happy that you're here. Can you see I'm in the jungle? Wow. What types of animals are in the jungle? Can you name some animals that live in the jungle? Maybe monkeys or tigers or panthers, maybe snakes. Ooh, our story this week talks about a snake, but I won't give anything else away. You'll find out in our story time. There's so many different things in the jungle, but you know who's the king of the jungle? <laughs> Let's sing that song. Who's the king of the jungle? Who, who, who's the king of the sea? Water, water, water. Who's the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? His name is J-E-S-U-S. -S. Yes, he's the king of me. He's the king of the universe, the jungle and the sea. Water, water, water. Who's the king of the jungle? Who, who, who's the king of the sea? Water, water, water. Who's the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? Jesus. Wow, that's a really fast song. Maybe we can sing it again and slow it down and you can sing along this time. You ready? Who's the king of the jungle? Who, who, who's the king of the sea? Water, water, water. Who's the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? His name is J-E-S-U-S. -S. Yes, he's the king of me. He's the king of the universe, the jungle and the sea. Water, water, water. Who's the king of the jungle? Who, who, who's the king of the sea? Water, water, water. Who's the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? Jesus. <laughs> That's right. Good job. Well, it, as you can see from behind me, you see that, that rope bridge? Well, I was trying to tie that rope bridge and my I got all wrapped up and all tied up and tangled up in the rope. <laughs> I finally got out, thank goodness. But it made me think of a song that's all wrapped up and tied up and tangled up in Jesus. We wanna be all wrapped up and snuggled up and as close to Jesus as we can so we can get to know him because he loves us so much. All right. Let's sing the wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in Jesus song. You ready? I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in God. I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in God. Oh yeah. <laughs> you think we can do it faster? Let's try it faster. I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in God. I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, good job, good job. Did your hands get all wrapped up and tied up and tangled up? If you have a friend there with you, give them a high five. High five! Maybe if your mom or dad are there, you can give them a high five. High five, good job singing. <laughs> All right, well, it's time for our story time. And we need to remember that when Satan tries to trick us, when he tries to wrap us and tie us and tangle us up like I was in that rope bridge, remember that we can get free from that and we can be freed from all of our sins because Jesus died on the cross for you and me. And even when we mess up, like some people do in this story, and they do suffer a consequence, you know, there's consequences or punishment sometimes when we disobey. But we can remember that God loves us so much and Jesus died for us on the cross so we can have forgiveness of our sins. And if we love him and obey him and we can pray to him, make sure that we thank him for all the blessings that we have, then we can have a relationship with him and everything can be okay because he will take care of us. All right, here's our story. We'll talk to you later. Good morning. My name is Scott Swanson. I am Scotty Swanson's dad. And today's lesson is about Adam and Eve sinning. 
Uh, the Bible text is Genesis 2, 15 through 17, Genesis 3, 6, Genesis, and also 3, 8 through 10, also 22 through 23. Today's story's truth is, although God gives us many good things, just like he gave Adam and Eve, a beautiful garden, disobedience can mess things up. Let me show you the picture today, boys and girls. It's, see right here. It's Adam and Eve disobeyed God. Let me read the story. God had placed Adam and Eve in a special garden that was very beautiful. In it, there were fish and animals and lovely plants and trees. There also was plenty of food to eat. Adam and Eve worked every day taking care of the garden. They talked with God each day as well. God loved Adam and Eve and they loved God. God had only one rule for Adam and Eve. He told them not to eat the fruit from a certain tree. One day, Eve saw the tree from which she was told not to eat from. It was lovely, and the fruit was beautiful. Satan, God's enemy, used a very sly animal called a serpent to lie to Eve about the fruit and about God. Even though she knew God's rule, Eve chose to eat from that tree. And she also gave Adam a piece of the fruit and he ate it too. Suddenly, Adam and Eve knew that they had done something very wrong. They felt afraid and sad. They even tried to hide so God could not find them. But no one could hide from God. God knew what they have done. And he asked Adam, where are you? Even though he knew where they were. God was trying to help Adam understand what he had done and what happened because of what he did. Adam said, I'm afraid because I'm hiding because I'm afraid. God was sad that Adam and Eve had disobeyed his rule. He told the man and the woman, Adam and Eve, that they would have to, had to leave the garden. Still, God did not stop loving and caring for Adam and Eve. God made clothes for them. He loved Adam and Eve, even though that they disobeyed him. God loves us too. Even when we disobey, we, we don't need to try to hide from God, but we should admit to him we've done wrong whenever we realize we've disobeyed him. We should tell him we're sorry for what we've done. What a good lesson today about God's love. Even though we mess up, all of us do, it's called sin. We, we worship a Lord and God that loves us so much he'll forgive us. Let's pray real quick. Father, we just thank you for the Bible and the story of Adam and Eve and that you are a loving, forgiving God. But we must be obedient for what you want us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Now next... My wife, Miss Joanne, is going to do a craft for you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Hi, guys. It's me, Miss Joanne. I'm Scotty Hope's mom. Um, Mr. Scott just gave you a wonderful story about Adam and Eve, and so now we're going to do a craft. The craft today we are doing is the, the Garden of Eden with Eve and the serpent. All right. Okay, so um, what you need to do first is you have a paper that looks like this and you'll need to color your paper and then once you color your paper you see this dark area right here you'll need to take your scissors and cut out 
You might need to get an adult to help you with this, but cut out this little area right here. You just need to put a slit in it. You don't even actually cut it out. And then once you, once you do that, take your snake and color your snake and cut him out so that he looks like this. You can color it any color you want to, but this is the color Scotty Hope chose. So once you get your snake cut out and colored and you get your scene cut out and colored, then you make sure that you've got your little hole cut right over here. I'm sorry, this is backwards. Right over here. Then you just stick your little snake through the little slit that you cut out. And there you have it. You have your servant in the tree with Adam and Eve. So um, I hope you have fun with this craft. And remember that God, even though we all sin, he forgives us. Have a great day. Bye. What? What's he looking at? What is that? Hey, Steve, what is that? What are you doing? Why are you... Fierce snake. Did you? It looks pretty drab, brown sort of a snake. They vary in color. Some of them are quite strikingly beautiful. Mm. This is a big one, up around six foot two meters. Six foot two meters. And what it's doing is That's it's just searching, probing size. the rat holes. Underneath the soil is like a subterranean labyrinth. Well, then it needs to go now, down in its labyrinth. by name, certainly not by nature. As long as you give them plenty of distance, they aren't all that aggressive. Here she comes, she's coming back out. No! Don't come out! What? Don't come out! Don't come out of there! Stay in your hole! What are you doing? You having a steering contest? Oh. No! Don't come closer. No, don't you do it! What are you doing? Ah! This is creepy! tired yourself out doing that yeah well what were you dreaming that that scared you well, and, and did i hear you say crikey yeah crikey well i was in australia and okay. i was with steve Irwin. you know uh -huh. that guy yeah I, re I remember the crocodile hunter yeah i remember and him there was a big huge snake and i was gonna it was gonna it was the most dangerous snake in the world and it was gonna get me oh my oh my goodness. Well, I'm glad you woke up. That must have been a scary dream. It was. Snakes are really scary. They are. Woo. Well, you're here practicing children's church. I, I wonder why you started dreaming of the crocodile hunter. Well, it wasn't so much the crocodile hunter, but I remembered maybe from our story about the scary snake yeah. that talks to Adam and Eve and tips them and says bad things. Oh, oh, I get it. So you, you heard that story and it just made you, you really scared from that story. And then you had a bad dream about snakes. Yeah, they're just, they're just hanging out in the garden, enjoying life. And the scary snake comes up and starts talking to Eve. And, and my dad said, everything that happened in this world that's bad was Eve's fault. But it was really that scary, mean old snake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sometimes we, we misunderstand that story and we want to blame one person or, or the other, but both Adam and Eve are both guilty. Uh, Eve shouldn't have listened to that snake. She should have listened to what God said, but Adam was right there with her the whole time. Yeah, just like it's his fault. Yeah. <laughs> that's right, that's right. 
well, look, little Jimmy, I don't want you going around being scared of snakes. So I think one thing that's important to know is that the snake that was in the garden is not the same as any of our snakes today. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was totally different. Like that snake could like walk and had like magical powers and could talk. There's no snakes today that can talk. I know. I was like, why is that snake talking? Yeah, I know. it. That's, that'd be crazy if a snake came up and started talking to us today. It'd be really different. So we don't have to be afraid of snakes uh, like, like Adam and Eve should have been afraid of that snake and not listen to that snake. But you know what? The devil still works today just like the devil worked on Adam and Eve to tempt them and to make them disobey God. Whoa, like things that we're not supposed to do. That's like things that Satan wants us to do because it separates us from God. Yeah, exactly. Like those are the kind of things like, like Satan actually will take things that normally are okay or even good and he'll use those as a way to make us disobey God. Whoa, so Satan was just trying to tip them so they would disobey God. That's right. So let me let me give you an example real quick. Like, you like to play video games, don't you, little Jimmy? Yeah, they're so much fun. Yeah, video games are good and they're fun. And you can even play with your friends and sometimes with your family. But that's what Satan will do. He'll take the thing that's actually good that we love and he'll try to distract us from obeying God with that thing. Like, like if I'm playing my video game and my mom or dad needs something from me and I'm too busy playing the video game, I'm like, no, let me let him play this video game. Yeah, exactly. Or like say it's Saturday night that's getting real late and you yeah. know that you got to get up the next day and come to children's church and you want to be real, uh, really well rested because you don't want to fall asleep and have bad dreams. I know that happened like, one time. I fell asleep during your sermon. Yeah, that's right. And you fell asleep just now, too. I know. Remember? I think I was probably late, up late last night playing video games, too. I need to sit them down. That's right. So Satan, will, he'll take those things that are good, and he'll tempt us with them. So, like, we could stay up real late, and then the next day at church, we won't be able to listen to the sermon. We won't be able to sing, and we won't be able to get as much out of it as God would have us. And, and then more importantly, then what we get out, we won't even be able to give God like we should want to give God every week. Yeah. So that's that's one of the things that, that we should learn from this Adam and Eve story, little Jimmy. Not that we should be afraid of snakes, but that Satan takes things that even God made and he uses them to get us to disobey God, to disobey our parents, and distract us from what we should be doing. Wow. So... When we have maybe a thought that is something that might be like what God doesn't want us to do, we should know that's from Satan and we should not do it and obey God's word. Yeah, that's right. We should obey God's word. And we should also let the things in life that we love, uh, those are all good things. And we should try to use them as much as we can to, to help other people and to help us make better friendships and draw us closer to God. But whenever the things that we love start hurting our friendships and they hurt our relationships with our mom and dad and our family and they hurt our relationship with God, then we should know that's what Satan is using, just like he used that tree to tempt Adam and Eve. Wow. Yeah. Well, Jimmy, I'm glad that, that you woke up and you're not having a scary dream anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm just really excited about going to children's church soon. Yeah, I'm excited too. And it, it won't be a whole lot longer before we're all here together. Yeah, I'm so excited. I hear they have really cool special surprises for us when we get back. I know, I'm excited. I can't wait for the kids to get here. And see it. Yeah. Well, look, why don't we say goodbye to the kids for this week and then we'll look forward to seeing them next week. All right, bye kids. Bye kids. See we you love later. you. We miss you. We'll see you real soon. Well, hi, Jimmy. I've been hey. hearing. Hey, I've been hearing about you and all the good things you've been doing. <laughs> yeah, we have so much fun doing children's church videos. I have some crazy experiences. <laughs> I bet you have. I bet you have. You look like a guy who could handle them, though. Yeah, we learned so much, and, <laughs> and I love getting to talk with Grant, and we get to sing songs and hear 
Bible stories and do a cool craft. Ah, that sounds like just great fun. It is, it is. Hey, hey, I wanted the kids to meet you because you're one of the elders here. What? Yeah. What does that mean? Ah, uh, well, sort of uh, have to look back and see how things used to be in the in the times of the scripture. Every church had elders or someone who was uh, uh, sort of an overseer who was taking care of situations and things with people. And that's what we do. Wow. So you watch over the church like a shepherd? Like a, like a watch over over the sheep? Sort of like that. That's, yeah. a, that's a way of thinking about it. Uh, some of the sheep uh, just need more help than others. And uh, yeah. you try to see which ones you can help. I need more help than others. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look like it. You uh, look like you got it going. Looks can be deceiving. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Be. Well, how long have you been an elder here? Oh, it's been a while. I've uh, been almost 30 years. Yeah, I know. I know. Wow, 30 years. Yeah, I, don't, I know I don't look like an old man. No, you only there. look 30. You mean <laughs> uh, another since you were a baby? <laughs> ha, ha. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm a, I'm up in there and been there. For you don't have to say. You don't have to say. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, so why did you become an elder? Well, you know, the the I guess the main thing to say is the Lord expects a lot from us, uh, and and sometimes you just have the feeling that. Uh, that you are being called upon, and uh, when the opportunity comes, you uh, you accept it and move on and try to do the best you can. Wow! Well, I'm, from from what I've heard, you've done a great job, and we we love you so much, and thank you so much for helping this church out be better and be more Christ-like to to each other and. The, the town here in Sanatonia. Yeah, I, well, I appreciate that. I'm I'm not sure. No, you look back and you wonder how you did things and what you did, and you and you get concerned about the spiritual welfare of the congregation, and you make sure that they are they are uh, doing as a as God wants us to do. That's the main yeah, thing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking with me, and now I know better what. I'm yeah, yeah, I appreciate you letting me talk to you. You're a yeah. lot of fun to be with. Yeah, well, you want to say bye to the kids? Yeah, yeah. Ah, bye, kids. Bye. Good to see you. I guess it's, that's our time. <laughs> it's been fun. Good deal. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye. All right, that ends our time in Children's Church. Hopefully you had so much fun listening to our story, singing some songs, and talking with Grant and little Jimmy. We love you guys so much, and we can't wait to see you again. It's going to be soon. Soon we're going to see you. We have some big surprises waiting for you. We'll have so much fun together. Until then, have a good week. Bye.